Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lindsay, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Carl and I will be running today's webinar, Strategies for Using CK12. We're so glad you've joined us. Many of you who are joining us today are participating in the CK12 Certified Educator Program. So to all of you, welcome back. If you are brand new to the Certified Educator Program and would like to learn more and officially register with us, you can visit ck12.org certified and press register to get started. Um, just a reminder that this recently revamped program includes four different components, two on-demand sessions, three core live webinars, matching assignments for all sessions, and a final form requesting your certificate. Since this session counts as one of those core live sessions, you'll already be a third of the way through that requirement at the end of this hour. At the end of today's webinar, we can discuss more about the Certified Educator Program for any participants with questions, or you can type any questions in the Q&A window for our team to answer privately. All right, speaking of those Zoom windows, let's make sure everyone is comfortable with the Zoom webinar platform. You should be seeing two different windows, one for Q&A and one for chat. During the presentation today, whenever you have a question about CK12 that you wanna make sure that we answer, please post it in the Q&A window. That's the window that we'll be monitoring throughout the presentation. The chat window is a place for community conversation. Um, we'd love for you to introduce yourself. Some of you have done that already. Thank you. Um, if you're an educator, feel free to share where you live and the subject you teach. Just make sure in that chat window that you're sending any general posts to all panelists and attendees. You have to actually make that change when you're sending your message. Send it to all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see what you type. Um, while we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you're having any trouble with your video or your sound, you can let us know in the Q&A or the chat window. Okay, I wanted to mention to you that we have, this is one of a series of webinars that we're doing, and at ck12.org slash webinars, you're able to register for upcoming webinars, and you're also able to see our archived webinars. We've been doing a lot of webinars lately, and if you're looking for specific information on, say, CK12's integration with Google Classroom, you will find a webinar on that on our webinars page. You will also find the, um, the school closure webinar. We have a recording of that one, the how to teach online and learn from home with CK12. Um, but for those of you who are looking to join us live, we do have a webinar tomorrow that's on our integration with Canvas and Schoology. For any of you who use Canvas and Schoology may wanna join us. Or again, Thursday, we'll do the school closure webinar again live. And then next Tuesday, we're back with what we kind of consider the first of our three-part certified educator program series, which is CK12's Flexbook 2.0 platform. So that's next Tuesday, April 14th. Um, our webinar today is being recorded, and within 24 hours, it will be posted on the ck12.org slash webinar site in the archives section. So you can always go back and revisit a recording of this if you would like. And the one additional thing I'd like to point out is that we have two resource pages you might find helpful for the session. The first is a general strategies page. And then the second covers the SIMS and Plix strategies we'll be including in today's webinar. You can find them at the tiny URLs listed on the screen. Um, we also just put those in the chat window for you. So that's tinyurl.com, CK12 Strategies 2019, and also tinyurl.com slash CK12 Plix SIMS 2019. Again, they're in the chat window for you. You're welcome to, um, Download those, save them for a later date. There's no real action item here other than just know that these, these resources exist and they're, they're here to help you when you need them. So let's move on to today's content. With our Flexbook 2.0 platform, you have the tools and resources all in one place to plan and customize, deliver and differentiate, and assess and remediate. With that in mind, we'll be covering strategies within each of those areas. So first we're gonna talk about lessons and homework. 
We'll talk about designing your classes and assignments using CK-12 resources as supplemental or as core curriculum. We'll talk about ways to customize CK-12 to meet your needs and integrating related content throughout your Flexbooks and lessons. Next, we'll talk about differentiation and support for learning. We'll go into ways to differentiate and support learning at all levels, including CK-12 classes, innate components of our offerings, and literacy tools. Lastly, we'll wrap up with ways to use CK-12 to assess learning, monitor progress, and remediate when needed. Our main goal is that by the end of the session, you come away with specific and actionable strategies that you can use immediately to engage your students using CK-12 resources. Uh, before we really get going, before I hand it off to Carl to, to, to get us started here, um, we did want to do a quick poll with you all. So you should see a poll launch on your screen here in a second. And we have two questions for you. The first question is asking, what CK-12 resources have you used with your students or, or children, if your children are now your students? And you can select all that apply. So look through this list and any of these that you have experience using, please go ahead and select those. And then you do get to scroll down to the second question, which is how do you plan to use CK-12 in the coming months or year? And I know that that's all in flux right now for many of you. So we will give you a little bit of time here to work your way through. Carl, go ahead and take it away. All right. Um, so we are going to be looking at the results here. And it looks like that we have about 30% of you have used our new Flexbooks 2.0 platform. 30% have used our, our original Flexbooks, which is great. It's kind of our, our bread and butter that everybody knows us for. And our brand new interactives and clicks, 21%. About a third of you have used our adaptive practice, especially these days. It's a really useful tool. Study guides and videos were very popular. And some people have used real world applications. We're going to be talking about that today because I think that number needs to be higher. And a big 46% of you have not um, used CK12 yet. So, you know, the, you're in the right place here. So that's very good news for us to, um, to have that there. All right, so let's um, move forward. So we are gonna be talking in this first section about learning uh, lessons and homework. And before I get started, I would like to have a special welcome to everybody. I know that every, we have a lot of pioneers out there. 46% of you have never really used much on CK12 yet. And I'm glad you've come to this webinar because it's really going to show you some things that you can implement with your students or your own kids right away today. And I think that's the, the, the key thing is we're looking for quality resources. Obviously, everything on CK-12 is free and that makes it really, really kind of a, a good first choice. So let's go ahead and let's begin looking at some lessons and homework. 
So the first thing you can think about is using CK-12 for core and supplemental curriculum. And whether you plan to use CK-12 to replace your current curriculum, or you're just looking for additional resources to supplement your existing set, I'll discuss, discuss strategies for finding resources and tailoring what CK-12 offers to meet your need. Following that, we'll discuss using CK-12 within uh, class or assignments. And I think you'll see how that's not a hard thing to do either. So the first strategy here is actually the most powerful and can be completed in no time at all. Create a Flexbook 2.0 matching your scope and sequence. And you'll start by actually choosing an existing CK-12 math or science book. Then you're allowed to change and reorder it to exactly match the way that you need it for your classroom. And this is the thing that people don't realize you can do on CK-12. You don't just have to accept it the way it is. You can make it exactly in the right order, lesson by lesson, that you need. And this makes it really, really powerful. Um, you'll notice that if you sit down to do this level of customization, you can actually get a book in the right order in less than a day. And a lot of people do it in an hour or two and then continue to, to improve your book by making additional customization changes throughout the year. So if you wanna add or adjust resources for a particular lesson, you can start with the related content that's already been curated for our Math 2.0 and Science Flexbooks that quickly and quickly remove the ones that you don't need. Then you can put in whatever related content that you think appears for your students. So you get to decide which additional videos or which real world applications are part of the lesson that you want your students to see. And this is in the, when you're in the editing a lesson mode, you'll notice this is in related. And if this doesn't make sense to you yet, just know that we, um, you might get to this point later and it's not a requirement, but just something that you have the option of doing down the road. If you wanna go further and customize the practice students do within a lesson, you can even customize the existing practice into what we call a quiz. And then solve, oops, sorry, um, and then swap out the practice with that quiz. Alternately, you can leave the practice that's there in that lesson and assign the quiz separately once they've done some initial practice. So you have some options there. The quiz option is especially useful for you that might be teaching outside of the math and science areas, as you can create your own questions in a quiz and then tie them to the lesson in a Flexbook 2.0. Once the quiz is attached, you can assign the lesson and the quiz all in one shot by clicking on the assign button that you see at the top there. Enhance lessons with interactives and questions. Throughout our math and science content, you'll see a variety of media and interactivity included in these lessons. This ranges from the videos of science experiments to embedded simulations, clicks, interactives, to inline questions directly in our newest math flexbooks. If you're teaching math or science, we recommend that you start with a 2.0 lesson as those will be the most interactive. But you can always adjust the lesson to include your own videos, incorporate additional clicks or simulations, or create questions and use them with the lesson as students learn a new concept. As you think about updating lessons, consider localizing content, like this district in Tennessee did, by including a picture of Dustin Lynch, a graduate from their district, when discussing the Grand Old Opry. Consider getting students involved in this process too. Have them contribute pictures or artwork that they made that relates to the content in the lesson. Have them collect data on the local ecosystem and use that as an example for future classes. Split up topics and make them review videos that can, can be included in future books to help students learn these topics. You may even have them write their own inline questions and feedback that you can incorporate down the road. Remember, 
but none of this has to be done overnight. That first strategy, matching the scope and sequence, is a great first step. Any additional content or interactivity, student involvement, and more can be done in pieces over the next few months or years even as you continually cater or tailor the curriculum and resources for the next wave of students and requirements. So think outside of the box with Flexbooks and Sims. As you think about where to start and what resources are available, consider thinking outside of the box of how you might use the CK-12 platform. One example, a science teacher who also coaches lacrosse used the Flexbook structure to create a resource book with drills and fundamentals, including text and videos to help his team learn and practice. And while our simulations cover chemistry and physics and our science, um, you can use various ones in other classes. For example, the water fountain sim at the top there can be used in a pre-calculus class when talking about parametric equations. Or the at the crossroads sim can be a starting point to discuss trade. Even better, team up with a colleague across disciplines and create a lesson that spans both subject areas and helps students see the relevance of one subject in another class. For those of you needing to plan around the math common core state standards or very similar standards that your state might have, you will find our standards browser useful. You can find that under the explore menu at the, on the home page of CK12. Once on the CCSS page, you can click concepts and see the concept list that relates for each core standard. Or better yet, you can pick the Flexbook option and take, and uh, you, can, uh, you can take that and get the Flexbook that goes along with it. For NGSS, we know that science teachers are looking constantly for NGSS, new generation state standards content that matches what they're required to teach. And our browser will help you understand which CK12 concepts are matched with each standard. So you will see here that we have SIMS and you can find CK12 content that supports the standard that exactly you're looking for. So here's a good one. Why do trips to Mars happen only during certain launch windows? Why do diamonds sparkle? Does a, how does a, a capacitive touch screen work? And how efficient is a wind turbine? So these are great questions. Often in, in NGSS, they call them essential questions. And these really promote deeper thinking of some of these concepts. And that's exactly what we want our students to be. If you're a science teacher currently and you're looking for ways of getting a little deeper into your concept, these sims are exactly what you should be using through, you know, distance learning now when your students are not in your classroom. These are great ways to have them experience some of this without having you exactly, you know, in the classroom with them. Um, with them. As I just mentioned, our NGSS and CCSS browsers link to our full concept pages. A great way to offer CK12 resources is to share the URL to the CK12 concept page or the similar URL to the Flexbook 2.0 start page. And what the benefit is, is you're going to see all the different modalities that teach that concept. So let's say you're trying to teach motion. We're going to see there that there's a lesson, there are four simulations about motion, there's a plix, there's videos, activities, study guides, so many different ways of learning motion. So especially when thinking about preparing a lesson for distance education, it would be something that you might want to go to the concept page on CK12 and pick out what you want. Another way to approach this is find the lesson on motion, or in this case, it's uh, linear equations and distributive property, switching to math. And here's a lesson on that. And it's a CK12 2.0 lesson in our brand new intelligent platform. 
assign this to your students, but you also have access to a variety of other modalities to teach that same concept. And you can just assign this lesson and your students will go ahead and learn it. All right, one final strategy to help you find resources as you plan lessons is to use Twitter. It is a great place to connect with, uh, with other, other educators. And, you know, especially in these times when so many of us are working from home, it helps combat teaching isolation. And you learn the best practices and hear from leading experts who tweet about what they're doing. And if you are, are not familiar with Twitter, it, you can join and you don't even have to say anything. You can just lurk for a while. And I would encourage you to go ahead and you know, make note of some of these because this is where I as an educator have found some really great content, um, especially now during the coronavirus subcom crisis that we're experiencing. So hashtag blended learning, hashtag personalized learning. OER is a great hashtag to find all types of open educational resources. The Go Open movement is also another great resource. Um, 21st century skills, hashtag edtech, hashtag math, for science do hashtag SciChat, and then just the general STEM is a really good hashtag that you can search by on Twitter and find some leading experts in the field who have really mapped it out for you and are willing to share a lot of things to help you during these times when a lot of us are developing technology skills for the first time. Hey, Carl, can I jump in with a question real quick? Sure. Well, more of a comment. Several people were asking, is there a subscribe? Is there, are they going to have to pay for this? I don't know, even know if we mentioned that CK12 is a free resource. Very good. Let's go back to the very beginning. CK12 is entirely free. There's nothing that you have to pay. We are a nonprofit. But more importantly, we're non-revenue nonprofit, meaning that our mission is just to allow access for all students of the world to quality content. Now, in addition to that quality content, we're offering an intelligent learning platform now where we will use the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning to help each student at a personalized level. And it does sound too good to be true. We're fully supported by a family foundation who just wants to help students learn. So, it is that simple and it, you know it, it time in a time like this when you know people are are out there and struggling to find things it is wonderful to have a resource like ck12 that will just do what you need it to do let's help our students learn all right um so if and this is for my 46 percent of you that are brand new what you're gonna the best way to get started today as a strategy is go find a lesson that your students are studying or your, your children are studying and assign it to them. So you'll, you'll do a search on CK12 and then you'll find a lesson on CK12 and you'll notice that the lessons are already, often they have interactives in them. And the really nice thing is they have associated practice at the bottom. So you could just have them do it. But if you want to get feedback on how they did on the lesson as their teacher or as their parent, you're going to want to create a class on CK12, and then you're going to want to assign this to the students in that class. And maybe you just have one student in that class because you're teaching your student from home. But the idea is you're going to put all your students in a class, and then you can quickly assign them. And I think we're gonna go live in a little bit here and I can do a little demo of that, but I wanna make sure that you understand it's, it's that simple. We have the adaptive practice, as I mentioned, when they finish the lesson, they'll go practice it. And it adjusts and it figures out what level your student's at, each student at a separate level. And then it gives teachers and parents the feedback, the insights on how the student's doing. So you can use this lesson as the core curriculum or you can use it to supplement anything that's being used in the classroom. So it's a really nice solution here. We tried to make it very, very easy. 
Um, if you haven't, for the 46% that have joined us today, if you haven't seen our school closure webinar, feel free to watch that one of the archives that exist, or you can go this live this week. We are offering it again, I think on Thursday. Another secret sauce of CK12 is our adaptive practice, as I've been mentioning before. In the olden days, we used to give our students worksheets and they'd have 50 questions on it, all about the same concept. And if the student didn't understand what this concept was about, they couldn't do anything on the worksheet. And if they already understood it, they didn't need to do it. So the nice thing about this is it adapts to exactly what the student needs based on the skill level by them answering questions. And you can assign this daily to your students, or you can like assign five concepts all at once and tell them, hey, this is due on Friday. So we, uh, we have seen often the students are completing this, not just on their laptops and Chromebooks and things, but even on their phones. Remember, the CK12 works on any device. And I, for whatever reason, kids love using their phone to answer our adaptive practice. And I've seen it where they're answering the adaptive practice on their phone while having, for example, the lesson open on their Chromebook. So this is a great way um, to get started. The other thing it mentions here is we do have hints available so that you can the encourage the students to go click on the hints. And these are hints that have been written by real teachers. And is that they're the hints that they would have gotten if they were in your class and you were doing a little drive by and you saw that they were struggling a little bit. All right, another great idea here, which, you know, maybe in Corona time, because we're not really meeting with our classes during the day in person, but if you've heard of flipping your classroom and that's maybe assigning for homework modalities from CK12 so that they can learn the basics using our lessons and interactives and videos and things, so that if you have any live interaction with your students, that's the time when you can dig a little deeper into the concept because they've already learned the basics. And remember, our Plix and Sims are great ways to, to go ahead and engage with your students. Um, students arrive in class knowledgeable and ready to dig deeper. Also by pairing the adaptive practice with a lesson and you know, when the students are doing that for homework, it's a great way where they can get that foundation in the beginning and then use the time with the teacher, the knowledge kind of expert, to be able to have that person facilitate deeper discussions. So flipping your classrooms using our content pages are really, really a great thing to do. All right, um, learn using Clicks Interactives. If you haven't had a look yet at these, go ahead to ck12.org slash clicks. And you can also access them through the explore menu on the homepage. But what these are, are beautiful interactives. Our uh, founder Niru wanted a whiteboard to come alive. Imagine if a whiteboard moved and the diagrams were, were you know, you could, you could manipulate them. And that's exactly what these are. So they always have a part where you go in and you can you use it and then you answer some questions. And these are great to use as a warm up or a mid class activity or as an exit ticket or simply to assign it to your students when they're working in their homes now for them to be able to really de you know, go inside of a concept. And then the last question, there's always a series of questions to see how the student did, is always an open discussion question that doesn't have an answer. And this is a great opportunity if you have, like you could ask them to answer this question as part of maybe your learning management system, or if your class is set up on CK12, you have a Q&A feature, you can go have these discussions in a digital way that you would have normally had in your classroom. Many of these PLICs also link to discussions that are already happening in the PLICs forum in the CK12 cafe. If you haven't discovered the cafe yet, it is a great place to send your students to ask questions, but also it's a great place for you, educators and parents, to get connected with other educators and find out how they're using CK12. We also have our simulations. Um, once again, these are kind of cutting edge animated simulations of science ideas, but can be used in a multiple of subjects. So 
what's the difference between temperature and heat, which is a great kind of essential question from NJSS. You can use these as a brief activity in a demo, maybe your video chatting with your students. You can walk them through this whole simulation so they get a sense about various concepts. Or you can assign it to the students and then they can you know, explore on their own. We also have included slider-based questions so that the students have to manipulate the simulation to get a specific result. You also can challenge your students to upload their own real-world examples of this simulation. So simulations, if you are a science teacher, these are a great way to have digital learning experiences with your students and they don't have to be in the classroom with you. And you can see here, here's a follow-up. The community contributors have con contributed a variety of uh, like kind of associated concepts, um, in this case, um, in a variety of, of other topics, talking about like making a paperclip float and floating soap and sinking soap and all that. Finally, and I mentioned this before, if you have not used our real world applications, these are a great way to hook your students, to engage them in concepts. We have about 2,500 real world applications on CK12 for the concepts in math and science. And you'll find that these are really great activities for your students to do. Often it might involve reading an article or watching a video and then figuring out you know, the, the, the kind of the math and science behind it. So please take a look at our real world applications and um, we, I just said it wrong. It's, it's one of these things that plagues us here at CK12, real world applications. And um, I know Lindsay has often um, <laughs> kind of- I always struggle with it too, it's hard. Yes, real world application. All right, RWA we call them internally, and I suggest you all call them there too. But you know, once again, use these as a warm up or a, you know, in NGSS we're constantly looking for modeling. Even in Common Core we're looking for modeling. These are great ways to model. Um, so go ahead and um, you know, take a look at them and you're going to find some amazing content. Wow. So at this point, I think I take my brow and I wipe it and I say, we have just been exposed to so much. And I know so many of you are new. So maybe not all of that was applicable to you, but kind of the thing that out of all of that, that I want you to be thinking about is the, the idea that find a concept on CK 12 and assign the lesson to your students or your kids. And that is really where you should be now. And you're gonna see in the next part here, some other really easy you know, things that you can implement, strategies you can use with your students in this week. So let's pause here and maybe there's a question or two. Wow, I can see that our team, can I just say, we have a whole team of people answering questions and it's almost a hundred questions have already been answered by the team. So Katie, Laramie, Justine, everybody, thank you on the backside of CK12 here. That's a lot of questions, but I'm sure we can answer some live on the air, right, Lindsay? Sure, are, are you wanting to go um, live to the site? I will. Got a couple of specific questions, but maybe one of the first things we should show is again how to get to the webinars page because there were lots of questions about. I mean, you're you're intriguing everybody. Of they want to know more about quizzes. They want to know more about adaptive practice. So why don't you show them how they can um, find more about those things um, either on the webinars page or on the help desk? Sure. So let's start here. I'm, I'm, I'm currently on a student version. Let's go to a I'm, teacher version. I'm not seeing your screen yet. Carl. And you're not seeing my screen because I canceled the screen share. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you for saying that. There we can go. You see my screen now. I All right. So now I'm on a teacher page here. And I, I mentioned the explore button at the top. This is something that's going to take you directly into so many good options on CK12. Of course, you'll have direct access here to our Flexbook 2.0. But what Lindsay was saying was the webinars pages where you're gonna find a lot of great professional development to get up and running using CK12. So I'm gonna click there right now, and it's gonna bring up a page that not only advertises our future webinars, but also gives you archives to the ones that we've already seen. So this is um, this is my webinar, our webinar right now that we're doing. Hopefully you're, you're doing that. And then these are the three ones that are coming up that I think Lindsay 
talked about at the beginning of the hour. She'll also mention them again at the end. And there's even a, uh, yeah, there it is. And then we have all of our archived webinars. And this is where you're gonna wanna find out, if you wanna find out more about our Flexbook 2.0 platform, go watch this webinar. If you wanna find out about customizing um, Flexbooks and adaptive practice, this is a webinar for you. Um, here's the school closures webinar that if you're new to CK12 today, that's one I would definitely take a look at that's going to give you a good overview of not just, today is all about teaching strategies, but that's a really good one um, that Katie leads that talks all about what to do with um, how to teach and learn from home. Finally, you're going to find a lot more on other subjects, including Common Core Math. If you're using this in a subject that's not, science or math, which we have a lot of people doing now. Um, some other things here are the Plix and Sims Interactives, you can see. If you're using a learning management system at your school, like Google Classroom, we've got a whole webinar that you can watch right here, and also Canvas or Schoology. Um, so those are there, and you can start using them right now. So we, had, we even had an update, so if you had already been using CK12 but wanted to find out what was new in 2020. So that's a real overview of our webinars page, but for a lot of you right now, this is your page that you're gonna to wanna to go spend some time on to get up and running and ready to go. And as always, like everything on CK12, no charge for any of that. All right, Lindsay, another question. Um, we had several questions just asking, you keep referring to the new 2.0 platform of what's, what's the difference with the old platform and the new 2.0 platform? Sure. So I'm going to go, um, you can see here, this is our original platform, and I'm going to go to the new one. And it talks a little bit about what is new. We've simplified the interface, but the key thing is we've um, added in a lot of like intelligence. And I think that's the part that we are really excited about. You'll see interactives here. Um, you'll also see that you'll get feedback on how your students are doing, even including like, where did they spend time in the lesson? And we offer a histogram. If you've assigned a lesson to your class, you can see, oh, the student spent three minutes on this part because there was a video there or an interactive or questions. And so you can get all that kind of intelligent information. So just know that our newer platform offers the intelligence and what we think is a streamlined, simplified interface. The, you know, the original Flexbooks were very much a digital version of textbooks. So we've taken the idea of a textbook and just grown it into an intelligent, you know, platform based on machine learning. Okay, well, while our users keep the questions coming in, Carl, maybe you want to get your keynote back up and we're going to talk about differentiation, learning and literacy. And this is, this is a question that keeps coming in as well. Um, about just uh, one of the questions, Carl, is does our site read any text to the students um, and are our lessons offered at different levels? Sure. And I think one, just kind of to answer the first question about can we read it, we, off, we, we optimize for the Google browser, the, 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 the Chrome browser. And so you will find that there are a variety of third party extensions that you can add that will read a web page to your student. And I know that a lot of our students, especially ones with IEPs, um, need to have the page read. And so while CK12 doesn't offer that through our own a website, it can be done through third party extensions. And I don't remember the other question. Um, it was about differentiating um, levels of reads, but I think you might be getting some of and that. We are going to cover that right now. So let's go ahead and let's talk about that because we're going to show you how we're going to be able to differentiate lessons for our students and assignments because not everyone always needs the same thing. That worksheet with 50 questions on it doesn't work for all of our students. And then next we're going to talk about improving learning and literacy. Um, so we'll see some great things there. All right, so this is the big one here. You're able to create a little subclass or a, like a group, a, a group, like I always had the purple group. And maybe some of my students that had language issues and they needed some kind of extra help or maybe there were other students in the green group that didn't have the prerequisite because they, you know, they didn't learn the 
the topics well enough last year to be able to perform at grade this year. So I can actually add those students to little specific classes on CK12 or on Google Classroom, for example, I can make an assignment and assign it to specific students. But the nice thing is when you're assigning on CK12, there's no stigma about being in the purple group because after a while the kids figure out, oh, I'm in the purple group and I know what that means. But luckily, if it's all being assigned through you know, CK12 or your LMS, it's just being assigned and there's no stigma, which is I think really useful. Um, but you can still make assignments that are assigned to the whole class. Too. So you, you can make assignments for smaller groups of students, or you can simply assign to the whole class. So adaptive uh, practice as challenge and support. Learn at the appropriate level. As I said, for each one of your kids or your students, CK12 in the first couple questions on that concept will figure out where they are, and then it builds from that point for each student. This is a great way to um, help them learn at the right level. And then along the way, if it discovered there's a, like a gap that they don't know, it offers content to fill in the gap. Afterward, you can see the reports that, this, that our system generates to help you further understand what they still don't understand. And remember, the adaptive practice, if you assign a lesson in the Flexbook 2.0 platform, it also assigns the associated practice. So like I said, if you leave with one thing today and you're a new user to CK12, it's you need to be assigning a lesson and the practice in a 2.0 Flexbook lesson. And I think you're going to see a lot of learning happening when you do that. All right, inline questions are a great way to offer opportunities to get feedback when you're not there or when you have 35 students physically in your class, but you can't get around to each one of them. So we have formulated these questions so it gives feedback on the wrong answers and what specifically they didn't do correctly. So for example, in this picture, you didn't divide the price by the number of rolls to get the unit price of spongy paper towels. Oh, paper towels, very topical. So here the student is receiving information about what they did wrong so they can get over this mini hurdle while they're still doing the lesson. And this instant feedback we know is really good. And even if I'm in class with my 35 students, I don't have time, I don't have like time 10 times throughout the lesson to give them all instant feedback. So it helps, it helps them understand more difficult ideas, the inline questions. And I even have seen it where you can get, you can assign your advanced students to create these ahead of time and say, okay, I want you to think of what's the right answer to this question, but also what would be the most common wrong answers and why are they wrong? And this is a great activity for a set of students to do. Obviously, they would be the advanced students. All right, um, simulations, challenge and support. So try the challenge questions, you know, and the, the graphs are wonderful because you can turn the graphs off and then you can have the students predict what's going to happen there. In our simulations too, we offer tutorial videos of a real teacher explaining how they use the simulation with their students. So if it's the first time that you're using it, you might want to watch that and get some helpful hints. We also have links to the concepts covered um, and just a lot of other things like worksheets and you know like that you can view as a PDF and share with your students. So there's a lot of support there. You'll get to them by going to ck12.org slash sims. All right, and there were some clicks here that I totally forgot about. Sorry about that. There you go, ba-boom. All right, and this is the worksheet there. All right, this is what happens when I, when I stop looking at my other computer and I just start talking. All right, translate and create. We do have these simulations that have been available, um, translated into other uh, languages already. And I think there's like eight languages, which is great. Of course, you can customize slider-based questions and get the students involved, okay? You can create new questions that you'd like your students to answer about these simulations. And finally, dispel common misconceptions where the simulation will help them truly understand the concept so that they don't make the same mistakes that are, you know, common to most students. 
All right, the Plix Interactives are a great learning resource. As we've talked about, there are hints there for the questions, and these are a great way for a student like this one's the vertical line test. If you remember from mathematics, how many times does that vertical line intersect with the um, func with the graph? Is it a function or not? Um, you can learn more with the links to the concept pages and you can explore the interactive and discuss it with others. And remember, I think the, the, these are great opportunities for you to assign to your students a Plix and have an online discussion about the, the deeper knowledge they're experiencing in the Plix. And you can go there by ck12.org slash Plix. All right, and I think we have a video here that I was supposed to set up, but let's go ahead and, um, yeah, let's start out the literacy section here by hearing from a CK12 teacher who uses the digital highlighting feature on CK12 to help her students process academic text. A student has more than one learning modality, learns through multiple modalities. Um, a feature that CK12 provides is the highlighting with different colors. So I'm able to not only emphasize a key point, but I'm able to assign it to a specific color that can also trigger um, another, maybe another memory for them. Great. Thanks so much, Anna. And, you know, Lindsay and I were in Anna's classroom and we saw her using this with her students. So the idea here is by highlighting, you know, your students are synthesizing, talking to the text. They are using the, the annotation feature to create notes. And, and, you know, I've seen in where we have teachers that tell their students after you've read the lesson, go back up to the first paragraph and create an annotation, create a note that summarizes in three sentences what this lesson is about. And then the really cool thing is you can see here in Flexbook 2.0, these high notes and highlights appear off to the right. And it's a great way to study for a test or to study for a quiz by reviewing the things that they wrote as part of their notes or the, the highlights that they made. Foreign language support. This is one that is just so nice. Um, we have Google Translate built into our lessons. And so at the bottom of the page, you scroll down, scroll down and you choose, I know a lot of our students here in California speak Spanish, choose the Spanish and the whole page is instantly translated into Spanish. And Google has done a pretty good job. It is crowdsourced and they've done a really good job of improving the Spanish over the last few years. Um, I know that they're not all the languages are fully developed yet, but you know, inc they do give a sense of it. And, you know, I've been in classrooms where the student might have on their smartphone the, lang the, the lesson in their home language and be looking at a Chromebook where it's in English. So to really learn that academic, um, that academic language that's used by CK12. And there's an example of the Spanish there. And a nice way to involve your parents to use CK12 is to send them links to our concept pages or directly into lessons as part of like a weekly email. A lot of parents would love to find out what their students were, were doing, but they just don't know. And so you could send them links. And these are just URLs to content on CK12. And the nice thing is when you've you know, when you're sending links to a flexbook, the parents understand what a textbook is. So there's a familiarity to it. There's a table of contents and there's individual lessons, et cetera. Then the nice thing too, is you can teach your parents how to translate it into their home language. So they feel a part of their students' education. All right, and um, we will uh, be next hearing from a principal in El Paso, Texas, who's talking about the power of CK-12's translate feature. I met a parent who was struggling with um, supporting his daughter um, because he did not speak English very well. So I, sh I brought up the CK-12 on my iPad. I quickly showed him how he can change the language and he was nearly in tears and he felt just so excited that now that he could help his daughter, which was emotional for me too, knowing that this is what CK-12 is about. This is what we want our parents, our language learners, no matter where they come from, no matter what language they speak, they need to find a place in our classroom and CK-12 helps us to do that. Great, Cynthia. 
So um, let's pause now and I can see we still have a number of questions. Um, so let's go ahead and Lindsay and take another question before we wrap this up. Well, Carl, um, we, we have a couple of can you show me examples, which I think maybe we're going to get to at the end. Um, sure. Some of the questions have to do with assessments and kind of tracking student progress, which I think is going to be the topic of your next section. So I would just I would suggest that you continue on with the keynote and our team's going to keep answering some of these questions uh, by typing answers. That sounds great. We can do that because we we're going to wrap this up at the hour point, but please know we will stay on to continue to answer your questions as long as you have questions. And so we just want to make sure that if people need to run and you go do other things right now that we stick to the one hour mark. All right. So what I have to do is uh, quickly find where I am here. I, I, there it goes. All right. So we're going to be um, doing learning versus assessment using CK-12 and how you can use CK-12 to both learn and also assess. And finally, we'll be talking about progress and remediation. And as you can see in that slide to the left, that we're going to be seeing how CK-12 shows the teacher and parents exactly what the student has accomplished on CK-12. All righty. Um, so many resources are designed with learning in mind. For example, our simulations, inline questions, and Plix interactives are all meant to help the student learn. With this in mind, we provide direct feedback and offer hints and other supports. These modalities give complete or incomplete scores when you assign them. That's all you get. If you want to see how the students are doing on questions, we recommend that you use the adaptive practice, both completion score and skill level. And the quizzes um, can show you also student progress. So you can consider creating pre tests and post tests using the CK 12 quiz feature. These are a great way to figure out where the student's starting, where's each student starting, and then where did each student you know, end up in the end. It shows growth, and it, it's a really great feature that obviously many, it's a teaching strategy. Been, used by many teachers, but you can implement it on CK-12. Remember that you can assign quizzes instead of the practice if you'd like, or you can have them do the practice and then assign a separate quiz that you've put together. Sometimes maybe you'll have a specific thing that you're emphasizing as part of this lesson that maybe our practice questions didn't emphasize, so you can create your own questions. Of course, you don't have to do this. You can just accept you know, the CK-12 and that, you know, like it's definitely a, it's, it's a part of, you know, how you can learn this. All right, and then it's time to look at some reports. So these are reports on all of your students. This is a heat map report that you can see at a glance using colors, which students are struggling, which students might need additional interventions or you know, anything. And, but the nice thing is, you can, by clicking here, you can go down and you can see where each student is. You can even see which questions they got right and which ones they got wrong. And this is really useful when, especially when helping students that are located in their homes. All right, and finally here, we have our insights, where on our 2.0 lessons, and people are asking, what's the difference between 2.0 and the original ones? But on the 2.0 lessons now, each one of your students' progress is tracked. You, if you've assigned this lesson to your class, either on CK-12 or to and through another LMS like Google Classroom, you'll be able to see their names off to the right, and then for each student, find out how much time they spent on the lesson, what's their practice level, and then the histogram on the left will show you exactly where they spent their time on the lesson. Now, remediation through recommendations. Now, one of the exciting things that's happening now on CK-12 is we can even point the student back to specific paragraphs that we think they don't understand based on what they answered in the adaptive practice. And this, this is the future of learning right here. Not only we just, just say, okay, go reread the lesson, you didn't finish this or you didn't learn it, but we can actually help them like here, why don't you focus on this paragraph? And once again, these are things that we know great teachers already do. So having the support of our platform can make all teachers great teachers. 
And here's an example where here's the question and it didn't answer. All right, so because of the time, I think we're gonna go right back into closing this out and then we'll answer all the questions that remain um, after we've um, kind of shared our, our closing information with you. Sounds like a plan, Carl. Um, we mentioned this at the beginning of the webinar, but again, go to ck12.org slash webinars to register for an upcoming webinar or to view the archived webinars. And this webinar was being recorded and it will be posted to the archived section of this page within 24 hours. Um, but for any of you Canvas Schoology people, just know that tomorrow we're back on talking about Canvas and Schoology. Um, and then, like some of our upcoming webinars, this webinar is one of the core sessions for the CK12 Certified Educator Program. So if you're brand new to the educator program and would like more information on how to get started, now that you have one webinar under your belt, go to ck12.org slash certified and click register. Um, we do love to receive your feedback on our webinars. So if we go to the next screen here, it's gonna show a link a tinyurl.com slash ck12 feedback 1920. If you have just a couple of minutes to fill out a short survey, that would be amazing. Um, we would love to get your feedback and know how we can improve in future webinars. And so this is an email address that could help you, this uh, jumpstart at ck12.org. If you know you have a technical question, you might wanna email support at ck12.org. Um, Carl talked to you earlier about social media. Don't forget to let your social networks know about CK12 and your participation in um, our webinars. We're on all the socials as CK12 Foundation and then that hashtag CK12 Certified is, is a pretty active one as well. So for any of you who need to jump off this webinar because we've reached about the hour mark, um, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you in a future one. Um, any of you who still have pending questions, Carl's gonna take the screen and he's gonna go um, back to the site and we're gonna start chipping away at your questions. Fantastic. Um, and I'm just, once again, I wanna applaud the team. 220 questions already answered today in just an hour. That's, that's some fast typing. So I'm glad that you and the audience there are asking good questions. Um, but please do contact us at our Jumpstart address if you have more questions or at support at ck12.org after we close out this webinar today. But before we go, Lindsay, how else can we answer some questions? Well, our team has flagged a few demos of, can we get an example of how to start a lesson? Show us, please. Sure. So this is a great, um, because 46% of, of people are new, I might even add on, like, I want to assign this to my student. Okay. And I have one student. Okay. My son. So I'm going to just kind of give you an overview for this. And I'll do it in two parts. The first thing is putting my son in a class. And the second thing is going to be assigning it to him and finding it. Okay. So we're going to break it down like that. So let's go to classes here. And I'm going to make um, a new class. So I'm going to create a class. And I'm going to do this a little fast because there are webinars that I showed you that will take you step by step how to do this. Also, our help page is really good on this. But I want to just show you how quick this is. So this is called dad's math class because my son's in my class. All right, there it is. And then very specifically in dad's math class now, I'm gonna go add my son. And the really cool thing is I, have, I can send him this email and I'm gonna invite him an email here. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go copy and I'm gonna go send it to him through email and he's gonna join that class. So now he's in my class. So now I want to go, let's think, let's do, my favorite is side angle side. Side angle side. And I think that's SAS like that. We'll see what it finds. And uh, maybe I just need to sign, do SAS first. That might be easier. All right, side angle side, triangle congruence. All right, so here is a, um, it's, this is a lesson that I found on CK12. I can see that it's in original lessons. You know, it's not a Flexbook 2.0. So I think I want to go find this in Flexbook 2.0. So it didn't quite give it to me right there. Let me go back and let's see. Yeah, let's see if there's, I think I'm just going to go directly into the 
geometry book because I know it's a geometry topic. So let's go down to geometry. And it's triangle congruence, there it is. And there it is, side angle side triangle congruence. All right, so there's the lesson. So you can do this with anything on CK12. You can start by the book and then look in the book for a lesson, but somehow you're gonna get to this lesson right here. And this is a really great lesson. Look, there's an interactive and a video and some really great pictures that are gonna help him understand. And you can see uh, there's a Plix interactive that's gonna open and Wow, it's a great lesson. And then some practice there. So this is exactly what I want to assign to my student. I click assign, and then you have a choice here of CK12 or Google Classroom. It's a CK12 class. And there it is, dad's math class. All right, and I'm going to assign it. He can turn it in on Friday. All right, it's that simple. So now when my son joins the class, he'll get a notification that I've made this assignment to him. He'll go in and do it. And when he does it, the results will come in in that class. So I'll be able to come here, click on my classes, and I can click on his name once he signs up and I can see his results. So there's two different things that we've um, learned today. We've learned how to quickly invite somebody to be part of a class, like your kids or your students, and then how to quickly assign content to them. What else, Lindsay? Well, one of the questions was about setting up these subgroups. So what Carl was just showing you was a CK-12 class. And for instance, my sister homeschools year-round all the time, and she's decided to set up a class for each of her students. So Cecilia has a class, and Maddox has a class, and Audrey has a class. But Carl was talking about how you could also do this within a classroom context. And instead of having some kind of label that would um, not, not be great in a classroom, he was calling it like the, the red group and the blue group. Um, okay. that you can set up different classes um, within CK12 classes for this. If you're using Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology, you would do any assigning to different um, students through those apps. So, um, Lindsay, I've made a, a group I here called the Otters. I first called it Bad Readers, but that wasn't a good idea. So <laughs> I called it the Otters. And now I can add in whichever students. If I've already set up other students here, I can, I can reassign them to this, this subgroup, which is still, we call it a class, but it's essentially a differentiated subgroup. Cool. Okay. Um, one question was to see how to translate a Flexbook. So do you want to show them the Google Translate option? Sure. All right, so we're gonna go back here. Let's go to one of our exciting math, um, middle school math lessons. And we are here changing percents. That's a good one, I love this. And our math team has just put together some outstanding quality content here with beautiful interactives. And um, you can see so many nice things. But if you go to the bottom of the page, you're gonna see, in theory, <laughs> When, like any good example, I'm going to refresh my page here. And I'm not seeing the, um, let's try a different one. Let's try a science one. This never happened. Let's go look at the biology book. Oh, there it is. So this is what you normally see. I have no idea why we weren't seeing it back then. But this is what you will normally see. But let's look inside of a lesson. and you can see a whole lesson, ecology. That's a very nice um, topic. So we're in the water cycle lesson. And if you go down to the bottom, you will see select language. And let's do Spanish. And now, todo sale en español para nosotros. El ciclo de agua, vale. So we can do that. And you, know, you can choose other languages. Um, so this is something you're going to want to share with your um, students so that they can always translate into their home language. All right, another question. Yeah, you've got two demo requests. I'll let you figure out which one you want to take first. Um, somebody said, I would like to actually see him do the inline questions. Sure. And the second one is about converting a flexbook to a 2.0 book. All right. So let's go, let's, let's not have it be in Spanish for the benefit of everybody. That would, that would help, I think. All different. right. So I'm going to show you a different way to get to a book. So, you know, we have on the teacher homepage, what do you want to teach today? And this is a really great 
access point to the content. Another one up here is our brand new top concepts thing, which I'll show you also, but let's, let's go do the top concepts, okay? So I can go say here, I teach biology. Oh no, I'm gonna teach math seven. And then what it does is normally during the month of April, these are very common topics. And we think that these might be great starting points if you're looking for content to assign to your students during the coronavirus. Okay, so one of them is surface area of cubes and rectangular prisms. So that's the lesson I want. I'm going to go in and look at it to make sure it's what I want. Where's todavía estamos en español? Lo siento mucho, no sé por qué no cambió. All right, we're back in English, thank goodness, for the benefit of our students. So the question was can you show us inline questions? So the interactives team has put a really great interactive here. And here are the inline questions that appear right away in a lesson. So unfold the cereal box and select all the true statements. The cereal box is made of six rectangles. That's true. Cereal box is made of two sets of congruent rectangles. Uh, I'm without seeing this here, but I'm gonna, this one's not true. It's made of three sets of congruent rectangles. I think that's the answer. So being a math teacher, I was able to answer that one totally correct, but let's go see if I don't get it correct. In fact, I got that by guessing, and let's try this here. All right, let's try, there we go. So this is an example where I applied the wrong formula. It knows that I applied the formula for volume and they wanted surface area. So this is outstanding feedback for your students. Not only did it just say, you're wrong, but it also helped them along to say, you know what, you're finding volume, but the question was about surface area. So those are some great examples of the inline questions. And you'll find the, the newest books on CK12 have these. Not all of our books have inline questions. But as I said, it's a great activity to assign to your students to create inline questions. All right, another question here. Um, it was how to convert a flex book to a 2.0 book. Sure, I can do that. So um, I, whenever you give me two things, I will always forget the second one. So <laughs> <laughs> just warning you. All right, let's go to the CK12 homepage. And the goal here is we're gonna convert content from original content to 2.0. So what I would do is I would go to my library, and I know there's probably another way to do this, but there you go. I'm gonna create a new Flexbook 2.0, and it's gonna be a blank one. And I would call this Carl's brand new um, biology flex book 2.0. There it is, save. And there's nothing inside of it now. There you go, it's empty. But what I can do is I can navigate to another book on CK12. So for example, let's say I'm gonna go to this calculus book, which I know is only available in the original platform. So here it is right here, no, the calculus concepts book right there. So I'm gonna go to that book and I'm gonna be, I can click on add to Flexbook textbook. Oh, I was gonna make biology, but anyway, you get the idea. So I can click on that book right there and say add this entire book to my other book that I had created. And let's go back to my library now. And all of that content should be in this book now. And there it is. And I might wanna edit this book since it's not about biology, it's about chemistry. I know, what I say calculus? There you go, so let's calculus, save. And there you go, so that's how you convert from an original Flexbook and make it a Flexbook 2.0. So what's next, Lindsay? Well, actually, our Q and A um, window is about to be wrapped up here, so I guess we'll kind of do a last call for any questions. Um, cool. And then I think you've given a lot of information, Carl. <laughs> so hopefully, um, everybody on this webinar is coming away with some great ideas for how to start using CK12. Sure. And I think the key thing to remember is we have a lot of supports for you. We have all of our archived webinars. If you need to contact us, please do write at jumpstart at ck12.org and we're here to help you. Also, um, you know, there's just, there we have our cafe discussion forum. We are your partner 
in trying to get this done, okay? It's a new world out there in the last few weeks, and so CK12 is really here to help you do it. All right, Lindsay, are we, are we good to go then? Um, I think our team, uh, of course, a bunch of questions are just now coming in. I think our team is attempting to um, answer a bunch of these. Um, trying to think, it's a lot of how did you do that? Uh, but I don't know what that is. Yes, Carl. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, some questions about the Certified Educator Program, which if you've registered for the program, you should have access to a program course, a book that has all of the on-demand lessons and the assignments. Um, when you re-watch re this webinar, no, unfortunately, the Q&A in the chat window will not be present. It will just be, um, it will just be the recording of the webinar. Right. Yeah, for those of you who are thinking about the certified program, it's a really great program that teaches you kind of the best of CK12 and really is about supporting you on the things that you're going to need. So, you know, please, you know, take a look at that. There's a really good introductory video right here that you can watch that talks about some of the benefits of it. Um, and it's free. We don't charge for it like anything else here at CK12. So. A couple of the questions that just came in are kind of a specific, it sounds like, to these users and their accounts. And so I would just encourage you to email support at ck12.org to get a specific answer to what may be going on with your individual um, student accounts. Um, so Carl, I think we're going to have to go ahead and end the webinar now or we'll, we'll never be able to end it. So again, thank you for everyone for joining us. If you didn't get your question answered, support at ck12.org and we will see you next time. Thanks so much.